This video is going to be the third in the series of using Legacy's Copy Lathe uh, toolpath in Conversational Cam Pro. We call it the G200 because that's the code that actually creates what we're going to do. In the first video, we showed how to take uh, just using a one inch diameter core box or extended core box and just turn this uh, vector into, into a turning. So this was just a simple vector, just 2D. We didn't have to model or anything and created that. The second video, we actually did something a little bit more complicated. You can see we had to go to a smaller cutter and we because we wanted to create these details in here. And we could combine these two cutters and do the large cutter here and the, the fine cutter here, but we decided we didn't want to change tools, so we just followed it like so. And the only dimensions we needed were the size of the blank. In this class, it's a little bit more complicated. So you can see we have some details here. This is a router bit profile called a classic plunge. And that one happens to be one inch in diameter. And this one here happens to be, if I look down here at the width, um, 0.4179. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's only part of one. Let's try that. Okay, it's a half inch. All right, so this one is a half inch classic plunge. Then this one here is a one inch classic plunge. Okay, um, if we turn on those cutters, so you can see them right here, this is Magnate's tool number. 3934, the classic plunge one inch diameter, and the 3931, a half inch. We're also using the core box to turn the contour section like a copy lathe, and we're using their 2704 surface planing bit to turn it round. This is the cutter you want to use when you're turning, because if you use a standard a surface planing bit, flat cutter, they are not ground flat. They have an uh, industry standard has a one degree taper on here, works great on flat stock, does not work on turning. It turns out terrible. Use this particular cutter from Magnate and your turnings will come out beautiful like they've been sanded. Okay, right, so let's go ahead now and look at the difference. On the other ones, if I go back to that one here, we didn't need any dimensions other than the size of the blank and the, and the, and the, the uh, dimension that we wanted to turn it to. Okay, this one's a little bit different because we're going to place these router bits in certain locations. We need to know where those are going to be cut. This we don't need any dimensions for because it's simply follow the, the vector that's already programmed in there. So when I turn on our dimensions here, you can see that um, it's, uh, we're going to cut it the same diameter. We'll turn it to 1.75 and 12 inches long. But at 2.75, the center of the cut, we're going we're to cut with that bit and 3.75 and then at 9 and 9.5. We're going to turn this end down here to 1.375. Okay, and then we're going to do this, this cut here. So we need to create those, uh, we don't need to create any of these toolpaths in Aspire. All we need to create in here is just one simple toolpath for that contour. The rest will be handled in Conversational Cam Pro. And the beauty of that is it takes all that code and assembles it into one program you can run. You can run. So we're going to create a, a new toolpath. Again, it's a 2D toolpath is all it is. And in the last one, we selected a, I think it was a 1 8th, yeah, 1 8th, 8th inch diameter here. This one you can see down here at the bottom, this is the 807, is a 1 inch diameter core box. So we have a vector turning. G200 is one inch in diameter. We'll probably change the name of these to CCAM Pro instead of G200 so everybody knows what it's used for. Okay, and then we'll select that. This is vector turning. That's the cutter we want. And it's one pass and it doesn't really matter the depth. If you go beyond one inch, let's say two, um, and you click on here, it'll make it go to two passes. Um, you would need, if you're gonna do that, you wouldn't ever do that, but if you ever did, you need to change that two passes to one, but as long as this is within one inch in diameter, it will do it all in one pass. And we're gonna cut on the left or on the inside because the starting point is here. And so we were gonna call this the uh, com combination, combination bit uh, vector turning toolpath or something that tells you what it's used for, okay? And this is gonna cut through the material if we don't care, okay? 
So it's that fourth one right there. Now, if we preview this, you can see it does cut all the way through because we the depth that we cut, but it's going to turn that shape right there. You can see exactly what it's going to look like. And then, of course, we are going to use Conversational Cam to program these position at these locations. So let's jump into Conversational Cam. And then the last one, we did the single bit. Well, let me back up just a little bit. We created a project called the Copy Laid Demo right here. And we selected just the turning center. We didn't have to do anything in the other workstations, so we just selected that. We'll go ahead and close that, and then in the turning center, we'll click on that, and it says Manage Parts. We created in the first one a very simple uh, part that we turned, and then this, this last one we did a single bit turning. And so we're going to create one more part here, and I'm going to call this the combination. Combination bit uh, turning G200 demo something whatever it is now this is 12 and it's 1.875 we're going to turn it to 1.75 I always make the blank a little bit bigger so I can remove all of the material as we as we turn it four sides it's, it's just a square blank that's uh, inch and seven eighths or 1.875 by 1.875 all right, now we can close this. So under the turning center, we now have three different parts that we, we've already cut the first two. We're gonna work on just this last one. So we click on that and, and uh, that's not the one we want, I'm sorry. We'll click on this combination, but it, it's alphabetized in the list. <laughs> this is the last one I put in, but it's at the top of the list. So you click on this and there are no toolpaths assigned yet. So we'll click on manage toolpaths right here. And then we'll just select our toolpaths. The very first one is going to turn it to round. Okay. After we've done that, and by the way, if you want to, you can name this. I'm going to, I'm going to call it round uh, 1.75 diameter. That's just the name of the toolpath. Okay. Oh, it didn't put the decimal point in there. It won't take decimal points, so it's 175. And you just got to figure out what that means. All right. Now, with that cutter in here, I'm going to turn it round again. And this one, we're going to click on it. We're going to rename it round one. Uh, I'm going to give a space, 375. That's 1.375. And if we want to do the same thing up here, just to make it a little more clear, we'll call this round one and then uh, 75. That's 0.75. I don't have a point, so I'll just put a space there. Right, so that's going to turn, let's look at the part again real quickly. It's going to turn the whole thing around, and then it's going to come back and turn this section around to 1.375. Now let's, let's program these two cuts right here. Okay, this is called, it's under turning, but it's called a tool profile. So we're going to use the profile of the, of the cutter to turn the detail. So we'll add that. And then we're going to add a second one, okay? Because we have, oops, wrong one. We have this cutter one inch, and we have this cutter that's only a half inch. So we're going to we're going to put that toolpath in twice. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to turn. So we're going to import the vector turning. We'll add that. Okay, so once we have all of the tool paths, now you could just put one in here and go program it, then do the next one and program it. That's traditional. I like the idea of being able to just put up all the tool paths in here, and you can come back and add them and rearrange them and do anything you want with them at any time. But this way it just tells me, well, you've got these tool paths, but they're not programmed. So let's click on this one. This is going to turn around to an inch and three quarters. So the cutter we're going to use is the surface planing bit, and that's our bit number one. It's not been turned around. We're going to start at zero. We're going to go to 1.75, and then we're going to end at 12. We'll cut the full length. Rough pass. I leave all these, although I do speed up, as you saw in the last video, uh, I do speed up my, my feed rates for my rough and my finish passes. Now, this is really intense, 800 and 1,000 inches a minute, but be, keep in mind, we are turning around and cutting very, very little material. So it works extremely well. Okay. You can use the default number, so it'll just be kind of slow. All right. Now, this one here is the round uh, 1.375. So we're going to use 
And it remembers the last tool you used, so it's, it's still there. I'm going to say, yep, we're going to use that tool. It's still tool number one. And this has been turned around. So it says, what's the section diameter? 1.75. That's what we turned the whole thing to. And then what are we going to turn? What, what's the new starting position? It's going to be at... We're going to start right here at 9.5 and we'll cut to 12. Okay. So starting position 9.5. We're going to turn it to 1.375. The ending position is 12. And again, I'm going to speed these up. You don't have to, but I like to because I like to move faster. Okay, those two are done. So it's turned it round in both ends. Now we're going to do a turning profile. Um, real quickly, there, does these both say turning tool profile? That doesn't tell me exactly what they're doing. So I'm going to go back into Manage Tool Pass, and I'm going to select this one, and I'm going to rename it, and I'm going to call it the uh, uh, one uh, inch diameter classic plunge, whatever you want to call it, right? And then I'm going to rename this one. This will be the uh, zero, I can't put a point, so I'm going to put five, zero, five. <laughs> okay, that's my point. We could use an underscore if we wanted to. We could say zero point five. I think we can do that. And then we'll call this the uh, diameter classics plunge. Okay. Yeah, that underscore worked. The decimal point doesn't. So we'll, we'll do that. And if we wanted to change these, again, we'd have to go in and rename it. But I'm not going to worry about that. We'll just play this. So now they're renamed. This, we know this now is going to be the one-inch cutter. So we'll go into Select Tool, and we go to the pl Classic Plunge, and there's the one-inch diameter. All right. Now, one thing I'm going to point out, that this has what's called a profile height. It's 0.465. That's the, the, or the, the measurement from the shoulder of the cutter right here to the tip measured vertically. That's profile height to form that detail. And that's really cool because it's already built into the bit. I'm going to call this our bit number four. That's fine. That's what I used last time. And the section diameter that we're turning this is in, is in the 1.75. So if we go back and look at that real quickly, this has been turned to 1.75. Now you'll notice that this bit comes right up to that 1.75 surface. And that's where that profile height comes in real handy. X-axis position, I guess I better remember what those are, 2.75 and 3.75. Okay, so it's um, X-axis, 2.75 is our X-axis position. Now I'm going to put a comma in here, and I'm going to put 3.75. What that tells me is we're going to use the same bit. We're going to cut one at 2.75, and then we're going to cut one at 3.75. So both of these cuts are in the same toolpath. And here's the key. Use the tool path. We say yes. It knows exactly how deep to cut. We do not have to tell it. Now, if you're not going to use the, the, the profile height, uh, like we did up here, it's going to ask you, then, well, then how deep do you want to cut? And you have to put that number in. But we're just going to say, nope, just use the profile height. We don't have to worry about it. And the defaults here are all good, so I'm just going to click Finish and Save. And then we're going to click on this one, and we're going to choose a classic spiral not spiral, classic plunge, the half inch right here. And the last one I used was four, so we'll use this one as five. Now this one, let's look at the dimensions and see if we need to do something different. Okay, so yeah, we've only turned it around from here down. So we're, we have all this material here, uh, halfway through this one, that's fine. So we're gonna tell it's one and three quarters and we're gonna cut down from there. So in this case, I need to know how deep that is. Uh, because I'm not using just the profile height. The profile height would push it up here to the top. Okay. If we were doing it this profile height, on, or on this section diameter, it would cut it correctly, but we're going to cut it off this larger diameter because this material is steer, still here. So the, the depth of the cut is actually 0.375. From the surface of the 1.75 down to the tip of that bit, we measured it's 0.375. All right, so here we go. Section diameter, 1.75. Fat fingered it here. And okay, now what are those positions? Let's look at that. It is nine and nine and a half. So nine, comma, space, 9.5. Use the profile height. In this case, we say no. And what is the depth? It's 0.375. Okay? 
The rest of it is fine. We're going to go ahead and use that. Click Finish and Save. And then the last thing here is we're going to import that vector. So let's see. Did I save this vector out? I don't think I did. Combination bit vector turning. Okay, so we're going to save just this last one out. And we're using the three axis post processor. Even it's drawn in 2D. So it's like we're cutting there, but conversational cam turns it into the turning. So it's the combination. Um, we're going to call it the combination bit vector turning. I've got one in here already that's got a different name, but we'll use this one. Combination bit. Save. Okay, so now we can come in here and click on the vector turning. And up here, it says select that G code. And so we're going to go find that code real quickly. And I put it in this folder. Okay, in this folder here. And it's called the combination bit. And there's the date and timestamp, so we know that that's the one. And we're turning. All that's good. So all we got to do is put in here the section diameter. It's 1.75. And we're going to select the tool. And if you remember, if we go back, yeah, let's just go back. You can see we're using the one inch diameter core box bit for that. So that's what we'll select here is the core box one inch. And we'll select this. Now, last time we assigned it as one, but we knew that was wrong. We did end up assigning it at two. So we'll put it in two here for right now and assign it like that. Again, we can always go back and check that before we run the program. We're not going to change position diameter or do a mirror or anything. We will do the auto step over. So I'm going to change that to yes and click finish save. There's where it's going to start in the X and the Y. And those are the maximum minimum diameters. And that's what you expect. And so we hit generate. And there's the code that you can go load and run to cut that part. All done in Conversational Cam Pro, turn it into a copy label. Well, you can see how simple it is. And in this case, it was a little bit more complicated than before because we combined router bit profiles and details with the contour turning. Uh, but we can do this all as 2D. All we do in here is draw. We don't program anything in here. Just draw, take it in the conversational cam, and it creates the whole code doing everything that we need. And it's all within that project. This project's pretty simple. It's just a, a demonstration project. If we look at conversational cam here real quickly, we're in the uh, in this project, the copy laid demo project. And it has only the turning workstation, but it has three different parts that are all programmed in here. And all three of these are using it as a copy laid. Okay. Well, hope you enjoyed the video. You can like and subscribe. Um, if you have any questions, you can call our 801-491-0010. We'll catch you in the next video.